Greetings to everyone. Welcome back once again to my educational channel on biology. I'm teacher Janet. Today we'll be studying the lymphatic system, subtopic 10.7 in our uh, Form 4 biology syllabus. So the lymphatic system is a system, a circulatory system that's separate from the blood circulatory system, but it is connected to the blood circulatory system. Let's find out more about this mysterious system that is silent and doesn't have a pump at all. The learning standards for this lesson are as follows. 10.7 Lymphatic System of Humans Firstly, after this lesson, we should be able to synthesize the process of formation of two types of fluids, tissue fluid and lymph. Secondly, compare and contrast the contents of lymph and tissue fluid or compare and contrast the contents of limb with blood. Number three, we should be able to describe the components of the lymphatic system, namely limb, lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessels, limb nodes, and lymphatic organs. And fourthly, justify the necessity of the lymphatic system, which is number one, to complement the blood circulatory system Number two, to transport lipid-soluble substances. And number three, to carry out body defense. Now, here's an overview of what we are going to study, which is similar to the learning standards, right? So for 10.7, the lymphatic system of humans, first, we are going to talk about the formation of tissue fluid and limb from blood. And next, we'll study about the contents of limb, tissue fluid and blood. Then the components of the lymphatic system, then the circulation of limb, relationship between blood circulatory system and lymphatic system, and finally, the importance or necessity of having the lymphatic system. Let's begin with A, formation of tissue fluid and limb from blood. So first of all, let's discuss the formation of tissue fluid from blood plasma. Now, this diagram shows you the region of the tissues, and we can see a blood capillary here in red with the red blood cells inside it or the erythrocytes inside. And then here, outside the blood capillaries, are the cells bathed in a fluid called tissue fluid, which fills the intercellular spaces between the cells. Okay, So tissue fluid is a fluid that bathes the cells, and it fills the intercellular spaces in between the cells. So you want to know how this tissue fluid is formed. Now, first of all, the blood that reaches the arterial end of the blood capillary. That means from the arteries, the blood flows into the arterioles and then to the blood capillaries. So in this region near the arterioles, the blood is at high pressure. Due to the small diameter of the capillaries and due to the pumping action of the heart. Okay, because the heart is pumping the blood, and so there is a it provides the pressure for the blood to move. And also, when the blood reaches the capillaries with small diameter, then the blood pressure will be high, right? So, at this point here, there's high hydrostatic pressure of blood in the blood capillaries. Thus, this high hydrostatic pressure in blood capillary, in the blood capillary, forces out some fluid from blood plasma through the capillary walls here. So capillary walls have some pores huh? and the fluid from the blood plasma flows through these capillary walls into these in intercellular spaces here between the cells to form the tissue fluid. Old term for tissue fluid is interstitial fluid as is used in the old textbook. Okay, But for new textbook, we use the term tissue fluid. So tissue fluid is the fluid that bathes the cells, surrounds the cells, it bathes the cells, and it is the location for exchange of substances between the cells and the fluid itself, right? So, for example, oxygen will diffuse from the tissue fluid into the cells, and carbon dioxide will diffuse from the cells out into the tissue fluid, all right? So, the process of formation of tissue fluid involves a process called filtration because under high hydrostatic pressure, Smaller molecules like water and glucose and oxygen 
can pass through the pores in the capillary wall here, shown by the green arrows. But the larger components like erythrocytes or red blood cells and also plasma proteins found in the liquid part of the blood, in the plasma, the blood plasma. They are all large components of blood, okay? So they cannot pass through the walls of the blood capillaries because they are too large to go through the pores here. So they will remain in the blood capillaries, all right? So that's the formation, that's the process of formation of tissue fluid. Now let's go through the notes. The human lymphatic system, the first aspect is to discuss the formation of tissue fluid from blood. So question number one, explain the formation of tissue fluid as in our learning standard. Okay. So blood that reaches the arterial end of the blood capillary is at high pressure due to the small diameter of the blood capillaries and the pumping action or force of the heart. Thus, the high hydrostatic pressure, this is very important, huh? the high hydrostatic pressure in blood capillaries forces out some fluid from the blood plasma through the capillary walls into the intercellular spaces between the cells to form the tissue fluid, which in the old uh, syllabus is called interstitial fluid. Okay? So blood plasma also diffuses out from blood capillaries into the intercellular spaces. So there are two uh, processes here. One is the filtration process when the fluid from the blood plasma is forced out under high hydrostatic pressure through the capillary walls. But there's also a diffusion process where the blood plasma diffuses out from the blood capillaries into the intercellular spaces. This is mentioned in the textbook about diffusion. Okay. Now, the process of formation of tissue fluid involves filtration. So it involves the process of filtration in which under high hydrostatic pressure, the small molecules like water are forced through the pores in the capillary wall to form the tissue fluid in the intercellular spaces, right? But larger components like plasma proteins and erythrocytes remain in the blood, in the blood capillaries because they are too large to pass through the pores in the walls, in the blood capillary wall. So the important uh, point here is now, uh, B. If you're asked to explain the formation of tissue fluid, three marks, then B is the one. All right? Include all the points here. Let's answer some questions about tissue fluid. What is tissue fluid? Tissue fluid is the fluid that occupies the intercellular spaces between the cells and it bathes the cells. It is formed from blood plasma and is similar to blood plasma, but without the plasma proteins such as fibrinogen, and albumin. Now, what is the composition of tissue fluid? It contains nutrients, hormones, cellular wastes, respiratory gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, and leukocytes such as the phagocytes. Now, tissue fluid, however, does not contain any erythrocytes, platelets, and plasma proteins compared to blood that has all these. Now, because these components of blood, the erythrocytes, platelets, and plasma proteins are too large to pass through the blood capillary wall. Okay, So tissue fluid doesn't have any red blood cells or platelets or plasma proteins. Now, what is the role or function of tissue fluid? Tissue fluid allows exchange of materials between the blood and cells to occur. For example, nutrients like glucose and amino acids and oxygen diffuse from the tissue fluid here into the body cells, whereas excretory products like nitrogenous wastes and carbon dioxide diffuse out of the body cells into the tissue fluid. And then from the tissue fluid, the waste products will then uh, go into the blood capillaries, diffuse into the blood capillaries. Then it will be taken to the uh, organs for excretion, organs like kidney for excretion. Now, tissue fluid forms the internal environment of the body. So this is the second role or function of tissue fluid. So it bathes the cells and it is actually the internal environment, the environment inside the body for the cells, right? It surrounds the cells. So it provides a stable internal environment for these cells to function optimally. 
And temperature, pH, and other factors of tissue fluid must be kept constant within a normal range. For example, temperature of the tissue fluid must be about 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it must be kept within this normal range by a mechanism called homeostasis, which we will study in another chapter later on. So we've already discussed the formation of tissue fluid from blood plasma. Let's talk about the formation of limb from tissue fluid, and that means formation of limb indirectly from blood plasma. Okay, so let's look at this uh, picture again, which we have discussed just now earlier. Now let's recap. How is tissue fluid formed? The high hydrostatic pressure in the blood capillary forces some fluid out from the blood into the intercellular spaces to form the tissue fluid. And this is a type of filtration process. There's also diffusion of uh, fluid from the blood capillary into the, into the intercellular spaces. Now, after the tissue fluid is formed, there is exchange of substances between the cells and the tissue fluid. For example, oxygen and glucose diffuse into the cells and carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste products diffuse out of the cells. So what happens to this tissue fluid that was formed from the blood plasma? 85% of the tissue fluid will diffuse back into the blood capillary at the venue end, okay, in the later part of the blood capillary. How does it occur? Now, at the venue end of the blood capillary here, the blood plasma is hypertonic compared to the tissue fluid surrounding. Why is that so? So this blood plasma in here is hypertonic or it has a low concentration, concentration of water but higher concentration of dissolved substances, okay? And this is because at the beginning, the, a lot of water has been pushed out, forced out from the blood into the intercellular spaces. So the blood plasma has become hypertonic, having less water but more dissolved substances. Okay? Furthermore, the blood pressure at the venue end here is already lower than at the beginning. All right? Because a lot of water has been pushed out and also... This part is further away from the heart huh? and the pressure has decreased as the blood flowed through the blood capillaries. Now, as a result, reabsorption of water, mineral salts and waste takes place in this capillary, whereby these substances, water, mineral salts and waste products, diffuse back into the blood capillary at this venue end. Okay? Uh, so that means the tissue fluid huh, that contains all these products water, mineral salts, and waste products diffuse back into the blood capillary at the venue end. But that only that uh, amount of tissue fluid that diffuses back is only 85% of the tissue fluid that was formed earlier here. Okay, What happened to the other 15%? Now, 15% of the tissue fluid that was formed earlier goes into another circulatory system called the lymphatic system. So, uh, the small tube-like structures of the lymphatic system here are called the lymphatic capillaries. Just that you have blood capillaries, there's also lymphatic capillaries. Now, these lymphatic cap capillaries can be recognized by their closed ends here, like fingers, okay, like a person's fingers. But they have pores, huh, which allow the tissue fluid to flow into them. Okay, So tissue fluid that flows into the lymphatic capillaries become the limb. All right? Then the lymphatic capillaries join together to form the bigger lymphatic vessels. So the limb is contained in the lymphatic capillaries and lymphatic vessels. Right? So here are the notes for the formation of limb from tissue fluid. We already discussed the formation of tissue fluid. Okay, now we're discussing the formation of limb from tissue fluid. At the venue end of the blood capillary, blood plasma is hypertonic. That means it has less water and more salts. It's more concentrated compared to the tissue fluid surrounding it. Thus, and also the second factor is that the blood pressure is also lower. So these two factors causes the reabsorption of water, mineral salts and waste from tissue fluid in the intercellular spaces back into the blood capillaries at the venue end. But only 85% of the fluid that leaves the blood from the blood capillary at the arterial end of the blood capillary, eh? diffuses back into the uh, blood capillary at the venue end. Okay, so not all the fluid that once diffused out 
from the blood capillaries, return back to the blood capillaries. So 15, the other 15% of the fluid is collected and returned to the blood through the lymphatic capillary. This is the smallest vessel in the lymphatic system. And the lymph cap lymphatic capillary will be connected to other parts of the lymphatic system. Right? So finally, the lymph will flow back into the blood, as we'll discuss afterwards. Now, the tissue fluid that enters the lymphatic capillaries becomes the limb, which is a pale yellow fluid. And uh, the limb forms about 4 liters of fluid. Now, this limb that flows in the lymphatic capillaries. 15% of the tissue fluid forms 4 liters of the uh, limb. Okay, that is lost from, uh, that, that originates actually from the blood capillaries. Okay, or rather we say 15% of the tissue fluid forms about 4 liters of fluid uh, that is lost from the capillaries each day. It will form the limb. Okay. So this diagram shows us the formation of tissue fluid and limb from the blood. So just to round up this topic of formation of tissue fluid and limb from the blood, let's discuss this diagram, which is similar to the one in the textbook. Right. So here you see the blood flowing from the heart. It's pumped by the heart to the artery. So this is this blood vessel may represent an artery, which branches out to form the arterial, okay, the small arterial, and then arterial branches out to form the blood capillaries here, right? So the blood will flow, oxygenated blood will flow at high hydrostatic pressure into the arterials and then to the blood capillaries, where some of the fluid will be pushed out, forced out from the blood capillaries under high hydrostatic pressure, and then it will push, be pushed out of the blood capillaries to form the tissue fluid, in the intercellular spaces between the cells. So all these white parts here contain the tissue fluid, right? And then uh, exchange of substances occur between the tissue fluid and the cells. For example, oxygen diffuses into the cells and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the cells. Then as the blood is flowing back to the venue, flowing back to the heart, right? 85% uh, of tissue fluid will be reabsorbed into the venues, into the capillaries at the venue end, right? But 15% will move into the lymphatic system, which consists of the lymphatic capillary here that allows the tissue fluid to diffuse into them. Now you can see that when we enlarge one of these lymphatic capillaries, we can see that this wall is one cell thick and it has tiny pores that allow the tissue fluid to flow inside. All right. So once tissue fluid flows inside the lymphatic capillary, which has closed ends here, so once the tissue fluid flows into the lymphatic capillaries, it's called limb. Uh, it's called limb. Okay. And here you see the valve, all right, normally found in the bigger lymphatic vessels. So lymphatic capillaries will join to form the larger lymphatic vessels that will then uh, transport the limb through the parts of the body until it flows back to the blood circulatory system. Okay. Now, next, we are going to go on to the second section, which is the contents of limb, tissue, fluid, and blood. And we are going to compare and contrast them. Now, let's look at this question. Contents of blood, tissue, fluid, and limb. Compare and contrast the contents of lymph and tissue fluid. Okay, so we know that from the blood, the tissue fluid is formed, and from tissue fluid, limb is formed. Now we're comparing the last two fluids here, which is limb and tissue fluid. So both contains nutrients, hormones, enzymes, cellular wastes like uh, ammonia and uh, nitrogenous waste products and carbon dioxide. Okay, respiratory gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen, uh, leukocytes. For example, the phagocytes. Now, both contain contents of plasma, but without plasma proteins. And if you compare it with blood, the limb and tissue fluid doesn't contain erythrocytes and platelets, whereas blood has erythrocytes and platelets. Okay. Now, so this is the similarity. These two are the similarities between limb and tissue fluid. So they are pale yellow in color because they don't have these erythrocytes in them. Right. Now, the differences. Limb has a higher content of fat and fat-soluble substances, such as vitamins A, D, E, K, whereas tissue fluid 
has a lower content of fat and fat soluble substances. Why is this so? The reason is because the fatty acids and glycerol that are formed after digestion are absorbed into the lactils. Remember the lactils in the villus? The lactils or villus in the villus are actually the limb capillaries, lymphatic capillaries. All right. So they will transport the limb in the lymphatic system. That's why the limb has a lot of fats and fat soluble substances because these fats or lipids and the fat soluble substances are absorbed into the lactils, which is a type of lymphatic capillary. Okay. Now, then the second difference is that limb has a higher content of lymphocytes whereas, uh, compared to tissue fluid that has a low content of lymphocytes. Now, the reason is because the lymphocytes are produced in the lymphatic system, for example, in the lymphatic organs and in the lymph nodes. All right. So lymphocytes are those white blood cells with the big nucleus in the center, like these ones here, and they help to produce antibodies to promote the destruction of bacteria and viruses. We'll study that in the next chapter. Next, let us compare and contrast the contents of lymph and blood, also for marks. So now this is an SPM past year question, right? So take note of the comparison, the, deep, the similarities and differences. So lymph and blood both contain uh, the contents of plasma, such as nutrients, meaning glucose and amino acids, hormones, enzymes, cellular waste like uh, nitrogenous products and carbon dioxide, okay, uh, respiratory gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, huh? and leukocytes. Okay, the leukocytes here are the white blood cells, for example, the lymphocytes. Okay, now differences. Lymph does not contain plasma proteins, erythrocytes and platelets, whereas blood, now when we talk about blood, uh, it means the cellular components of blood, the cells in the blood, the blood cells plus the plasma, okay, and the plasma, which is the liquid part of blood. So blood as a whole, contains the plasma proteins in the blood plasma and it has the cellular components which are the erythrocytes and the platelets but all these are not found in the limb what is the reason for that this is a common question can you think of a reason for that yes because as we have said before erythrocytes platelets and plasma proteins are too large to pass through the blood capillary wall to form the tissue fluid, fluid huh, which then forms the limb okay so these uh, components, plasma proteins, erythrocytes, and platelets, are not found in tissue fluid, and so they are not found in the limb that is formed from the tissue fluid. Next, limb contains more lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells that can produce antibodies to destroy the disease-causing microorganisms, which we call pathogens. Okay, okay. So lymphocytes produce antibodies to destroy bacteria and viruses. Why does it contain more lymphocytes than blood? Can you think of a reason? Yes, the reason is because lymph nodes and also lymphatic organs all right, can help to produce antibodies to destroy, uh, can help to produce the lymphocytes, the lymphocytes, all right, which then produce antibodies to destroy pathogens. Okay, we'll come to that later when we talk about the function of lymph nodes and lymphatic organs. So the lymphatic system is special in that it is involved in body defense and it helps to produce the very important white blood cells called lymphocytes, which can produce antibodies to destroy pathogens or disease-causing microorganisms like bacteria and viruses. Let's discuss this new SVM essay question that can be asked in the exam. Compare three body fluids, blood, tissue fluid and lymph, from the aspect of location color and composition it marks right so when we compare the items here we must have the similarities explain the similarities and the differences okay similarity blood tissue fluid and limb all contain water glucose amino acids hormones enzymes cellular waste like nitrogenous waste products oxygen carbon dioxide and leukocytes or white blood cells so this may be one to two marks. Now differences. From the aspect of location, blood is found in the blood vessels like arteries, veins, and blood capillaries. Tissue fluid is found in the intercellular spaces in between the cells. 
and limb is found in the lymphatic vessels and lymphatic capillaries. Color. Blood is red in color. Tissue fluid is pale yellow or some uh, textbook states pale yellow. Some books write it as state as colorless, right? And limb is pale yellow too, like tissue fluid. Now, this picture shows us the contents of blood, tissue fluid and limb. So, we don't have to draw this in the answer. It's just for us to imagine, all right, how what are the what the components are in each type of fluid. So blood has erythrocytes which contain hemoglobin, which is the red pigment that gives the blood the red color, all right? And then uh, erythrocytes are the red blood cells, and then there's there are also platelets and leukocytes or white blood cells in blood. And of course, it has all these uh, components like water, oxygen, glucose, amino acids, uh, lipids or fats and so forth, uh, which are not drawn here. Now, tissue fluid. Tissue fluid doesn't have the erythrocytes and platelets, so they are uh, the color is pale yellow and it con still contains uh, the contents of plasma like uh, water, here, uh, glucose, amino acids, uh, oxygen, and it also has uh, white blood, blood cells, especially the phagocytes, right? And then uh, fatty acids and so forth. And limb has uh, the content of limb is similar to tissue fluid, except that it has more of these lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells that produce antibodies, right? And it has more fats, which are absorbed in the lactils, okay? So let's look at the composition now, okay? We have already discussed location and color. Now let's, let's uh, talk about the composition of these three fluids. Our differences in composition, right, of blood, tissue fluid, and limb. So... From the aspect of erythrocytes and platelets, blood has the erythrocytes and platelets, has erythrocytes and platelets, but tissue fluid and limb do not have erythrocytes and platelets because these are too large. These cells or cellular components are too large to pass through the pores in the blood capillary wall. Okay. Uh, for leukocytes or white blood cells, Blood, tissue, fluid, and limb all have leukocytes, but the blood has the different types of leukocytes, uh, like phagocytes, lymphocytes, and so forth. Tissue fluid has uh, has leukocytes, especially the phagocytes, which can uh, move out from the blood capillary walls, through the pores of the blood capillary walls, to the sites of infection, if there's an infection in the tissues, right? So that it can defend the body against these uh, pathogens like bacteria and viruses. Limb also has leukocytes, but it's the concentration or the content of lymphocytes that is a lot more because lymphocytes, which are these type of cells that produce antibodies, they have a big round nucleus in the center. Lymphocytes are produced by the lymphatic system and there's a lot of lymphocytes in the limb nodes, okay, as an example. Of course, it still has phagocytes in the limb nodes, all right? Now, plasma proteins such as albumin and fibrinogen, they are present in blood but absent in tissue fluid and limb because plasma proteins are too large to pass through the blood capillary wall. Okay, so they are not found in tissue fluid and limb is formed from tissue fluid. So it also doesn't have, limb doesn't have plasma proteins. But it may have some other types of uh, small, it may have, it will have amino acids and so forth. Uh, but the plasma, I must write the word plasma, plasma proteins present in blood but not in tissue fluid and lymph. Fats or lipids are present in blood, present in tissue fluid and also in limb, but uh, the content of fats in tissue fluid is low as stated in the textbook, huh? whereas the content of uh, fats or lipids in limb is much higher because the fats or lipids are absorbed by the lactils, which are actually the lymphatic capillaries, okay, in the villi in the small intestine. Now, there are two more aspects here. Small molecules like glucose, amino acids, and oxygen are present in all three of these fluids, but the concentration is different. Blood has more of these uh, molecules like glucose. Tissue fluid has less because some of these uh, molecules will diffuse into the cells, all right? Glucose, amino acids, and oxygen diffuse into the cells for the cell cells to use. So the limb that is formed from tissue fluid will also contain less of these molecules that are needed by the cells. 
waste substances like carbon dioxide and urea, they are more is more in the tissue fluid and limb because cells produce these waste substances, right? So uh, number three, four, five, and six. Now here will there'll be four marks for this part, okay? So plus four marks from the first slide, yeah? you'll make it uh, eight marks altogether. Now let's go on to the third aspect of the lymphatic system. What are the components of the lymphatic system? Okay, so we're going to discuss the limb, which is the fluid, then lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessels, then limb nodes and lymphatic organs. Right, so components of the lymphatic system. Now, the, in the learning outcome or learning standards, now we are asked to describe the components of the lymphatic system, which are limb, lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessels, limb nodes and organs. Okay? Limb nodes and lymphatic organs. So you can uh, form an acronym here, volcano, right? V is for the vessels, lymphatic vessels. O is for the organs, lymphatic organs. L is for the limb. CA is for the lymphatic capillaries, the capillaries. So add the word lymphatic in front and uh, nodes. And O is for nodes, which are the limb nodes. Okay, so we're going to look through all these one by one. Let's start with the first one, limb. So before we talk about the components of the lymphatic system, let us start by finding out what is the lymphatic system actually. So the lymphatic system is defined as a circulatory system, which is different from the blood circulatory system. And it consists of three components, the fluid called limb, the network of limb capillaries, larger lymphatic vessels, and also limb nodes. And thirdly, lymphatic organs such as the thymus gland, spleen, bone marrow, tonsils, and appendix. Generally, it has three main functions. The lymphatic system transports limb or tissue fluid from tissues back to the bloodstream. It defends the body against infection by producing and using lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, and also the phagocytes. It absorbs fats and fat-soluble nutrients like vitamins A, D, K from the ileum or small intestine, okay, uh, through the villus. So we'll talk more about the functions later on. Let's start to discuss the components of the lymphatic system, starting with the limb. So limb is the pale yellow liquid found in the lymphatic vessels. The composition of limb. It is similar in composition to blood plasma, but it has no plasma proteins, whereas blood plasma does. Okay, And uh, the plasma proteins here are specific proteins like albumin and fibrinogen. Then Secondly, limb does not contain erythrocytes and platelets when compared to the whole blood. All right. So blood consists of the cellular components plus the plasma, the liquid part of blood. So you compare blood to limb. Limb doesn't contain the erythrocytes and platelets that are found in blood. Okay. Uh, erythrocytes means the red blood cells. Now, limb also has a higher number of lymphocytes compared to blood. So this is another difference between limb and blood. It contains nutrients, hormones, enzymes, cellular wastes, respiratory gases, and leukocytes, just like uh, blood plasma does. Right. The second component of the lymphatic system are the lymphatic capillaries. These are tiny tubes closed at one end, as seen here. They look like fingers located in the intercellular in the intercellular spaces among the cells so the lymphatic capillary wall consists of only one layer of cells very thin wall and it allows uh, substances to move into the lymphatic capillary okay the walls are porous and that means they have pores or holes to allow substances to move into them okay that means the tissue fluid uh, will move into the lymphatic capillary and then that will form the limb. So the lymphatic capillary differs from the blood capillary because one of its ends is closed and the other end is connected to the lymphatic vessel which is the bigger uh, lymphatic vessel which is the bigger size tube. Okay. Now larger lymphatic vessels are formed when the small lymphatic capillaries merge together. In the lymphatic vessel, there are one-way valves to ensure the limb flows to the heart. That means the limb will only flow in one direction, okay, back to the blood circulatory system and to the heart. 
Now, these valves prevent the backflow of limb. All right? That means if the limb were to try to flow backwards, the valve will close. Right? Now, along the lymphatic vessel, there are also limb nodes, which are uh, masses of tissues located along the lymphatic vessels at the neck, armpits, and groin, as we'll find out afterwards. And they have two functions. Now, these limb nodes that are bean-shaped or almost round in shape, they have two functions. They filter the limb to get rid of bacteria and viruses to protect the body against infections. Now, how do they filter the limb? That means they will destroy bacteria and viruses in the limb. Okay? So they have two types of uh, white blood cells. They produce and store lymphocytes. This is the first type of white blood cell that can produce antibodies to destroy bacteria and viruses or pathogens, okay? disease-causing microorganisms. And then there are also phagocytes in the limb nodes that engulf and digest bacteria through phagocytosis. So these are the two methods of action carried out by the white blood cells in the limb nodes. Right? So in this diagram, we can see all the dots here in the body. They represent the limb nodes. Okay? So limb nodes are found in uh, larger amounts around the neck region here, in the armpits, the knees, and other places. So let's take a look at the structure of one limb node. Okay, so the shape is like a quite like a bean shape, and it has it is joined to lymphatic vessels. Okay, that bring the limb from the intercellular spaces here, right? So, uh, as we have discussed before, huh, the tissue fluid formed among the cells in the intercellular spaces will move into the lymphatic capillaries. Now, these are the closed ends of the lymphatic capillaries. This is how we identify the lymphatic capillaries. Okay, they have closed ends. And then from there, the tissue fluid will be called the limb, right? Then limb will flow through the lymphatic vessels, which are valves into the limb nodes. So this is one limb node and you can see there are groups of uh, or masses of cells called the lymphocytes in certain parts of the limb nodes. These lymphocytes are white blood cells that can produce antibodies to destroy pathogens or disease causing microorganisms such as bacteria and viruses. Okay, So here you see one lymphocyte, the structure of one lymphocyte. It is more or less round in shape and it has a big nucleus in the center. And then there are also phagocytes sites in certain parts of the limb nodes which can move, right? Sometimes they are called the macrophages. So their function is to engulf, that means surround and then engulf the di and engulf and then digest the pathogens or bacteria and viruses by using enzymes. Okay? So they can move around and then digest bacteria and viruses. So in this way, the limb that flows out from the limb node is has less bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens, right? So in this way, the limb node filters the limb to get rid of the um, pathogens or bacteria and viruses, right? So remember the two types of cells in the limb node, which are the phagocytes and the lymphocytes. These are the two types of white blood cells. So here's another diagram of a limb node. Here we can see the bean-shaped structure of the limb node. And there are a few afferent lymphatic vessels that bring the limb into the limb node. Okay. So efferent lymphatic vessel is found below here that transports the limb out from the limb node. Okay, so the limb will flow into the limb node. And then here we can see that there are valves huh, to prevent the backflow of limb so that the limb doesn't flow the other way. All right, so the limb only flows in one direction to the limb node and then out of the limb node. So the limb node is like a roadblock because the limb will go into here into the limb node and then it will be filtered. So all the bad guys, uh, all the bad guys within inverted commas, that means the bacteria and viruses will be caught, they will be destroyed by the white blood cells or leukocytes, such as 
the lymphocytes. You can see the dots here, they represent the lymphocytes, the white blood cells that can produce antibodies. Now antibodies, what are they? Antibodies are proteins, proteins are released by the lymphocytes. All right, chemical substances released by the lymphocytes to promote the destruction of foreign particles or antigens, such as bacteria and viruses, okay, which are considered to be pathogens. Huh? Bacteria and viruses are pathogens, means that they are disease-causing microorganisms. So the antibodies will destroy them, all right? Antibodies produced by the lymphocytes. Let's discuss the last component of the lymphatic system, which are the lymphatic organs. So there are five lymphatic organs in the lymphatic system. They are involved in the body's defense mechanism to defend the body and prevent infection and disease in the body. Okay, so the five lymphatic organs are the lymph nodes, as we have discussed before, found in the under the neck here, you know, and in the armpits, huh, concentrated at the armpits and the uh, knees and the groin area here. And also other they are also found in other parts of the uh, body, right? So these are the limb nodes which we have discussed just now that are involved in uh, the defense mechanism to filter the limb that flows through them. And then we have the spleen, which is an organ just an organ just uh, under the left part of the rib cage, right? Then you have the thymus gland that is above the heart, and you have the bone marrow, which is the tissue inside the in the middle part of the bones, certain bones, right? So the bone marrow helps to produce uh, the blood cells, like white blood cells, red blood cells, and also platelets, right? This we have discussed earlier. And then we have the appendix, which is a small projection sticking out from the large intestine here. So all these are the lymphatic organs. Let's find out their roles or functions. Right, so what are lymphatic organs? Lymphatic organs are involved in the body's defense mechanism, specifically in the immune system. So immune system is the system in the body that whereby uh, in which the lymphocytes produce antibodies to destroy pathogens. Okay? And pathogens, what are pathogens? Pathogens are microorganisms that cause disease, as stated down here. And the examples are bacteria, viruses, fungi, and so forth. So uh, Lymphatic organs provide resistance to disease. They help to the body to fight against disease and infection by pathogens. So they're involved also in the production and development of lymphocytes. Okay, And for some of them, it uh, depends on the organ involved. So lymphatic organs help to filter out pathogens from lymph or blood. Okay, Now, Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are the white blood cells involved in the immune system. They produce antibodies to promote destruction of pathogens and other foreign particles. So lymphocytes are white blood cells or leukocytes involved in the immune response. They are a type of white blood cell. Okay, and then the lymphocytes are divided into two main types. T lymphocytes destroy body cells infected by pathogens, whereas B lymphocytes produce antibodies directly to destroy the pathogens. Okay, let's talk about the first lymphatic organ, which is the bone marrow. So the bone marrow is a lymphatic organ that produces both types of lymphocytes, T and B lymphocytes. We know that the bone marrow also produces red blood cells and platelets. So the bone marrow is a very important tissue, uh, which, found, which is found in the center of certain types of bones, okay, like the firmer and the humerus. Okay, firmer is the thigh bone, humerus is the bone in the arm. So uh, after producing both types of lymphocytes, right, the bone marrow, in the bone marrow, the B lymphocytes will mature in the bone marrow. They'll stay in the bone marrow and mature in the bone marrow. Okay, so the word B here stands for bone marrow. And we know that B lymphocytes produce antibodies to destroy pathogens. How about the T lymphocytes? Now T lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow, but they will travel to the thymus gland where they mature there. So this is the function of the thymus gland, site for the T lymphocytes to mature. And T lymphocytes are involved to directly destroy body cells infected by pathogens. So we will be studying a bit about these T and B lymphocytes in the next topic. Okay? Right, going on to the third lymphatic organ, the spleen. So at least know one function for the each lymphatic organ. Okay? 
Now the spleen. It filters out pathogens such as bacteria and viruses from blood. So when the blood flows through the spleen, the white blood cells in the spleen will attack and destroy the pathogens to protect the body against infection. Okay, so it's a very important organ because it helps to protect our body against infection by filtering the blood. It stores lymphocytes too and it helps to remove all red blood cells. Now appendix. The appendix is a projection that sticks out from the uh, large intestine. It contains lymphoid tissue which has lymphocytes to destroy bacteria too. Lymph nodes we already discussed, it's very important. Filter out pathogens or bacteria and viruses from lymph. So the two modes of action are number one or A, it produces and store lymphocytes that produce antibodies to destroy pathogens, as stated in the textbook. Huh? It produces the lymphocytes. Now B it contains phagocytes that engulf and digest pathogens. Okay? So tonsils. Tonsils are masses of lymphoid tissue that is found at the back of the throat. Okay? And uh, they filter out bacteria or pathogens that enter through the nose in the air that flows uh, into the body or bacteria from food okay, that we swallow, from the, in the food that we swallow. To prevent infection in the body. So it's part of the immune system too. Let's find out more about tonsils. Now, tonsils. Huh? So let's look at this question. A sick student has fever and painful inflamed tonsils for a few days. Explain the function of the tonsils and why are the tonsils inflamed and swollen. Now you can see this picture here. If you open your mouth and look in the mirror and then shine like at the back, huh, you may be able to see uh, these two projections sticking out. This is the mass of masses of tissues called the tonsils at the two sides of our throat. Okay. Now when they are inflamed, they will look red and swollen like this and it's very painful too. It can be very painful. Okay. So when the doctor checks you uh, and puts a sort of ice cream stick to press down your tongue, they're looking inside your mouth. They're also checking to see whether you have inflamed tonsils. If you have them, probably you have some a sore throat. That may be caused by bacteria or viruses. Okay. So uh, what is the function of tonsils? Let's go back to the question. Explain the function of tonsils. A tonsil is a mass of lymphoid tissue. It's a part of the lymphatic system involved in the body's defense mechanism. And they filter the limb that passes through them by destroying bacteria or viruses that enter through the mouth or nose into the lip. Now, what is the, why do they get inflamed or swollen? They become inflamed or swollen when fighting infection by bacteria or viruses in the throat. So tonsils swell due to the accumulation of large numbers of bacteria and leukocytes. So more leukocytes are produced and gather in the tonsils to destroy the bacteria or viruses, right? And these leukocytes or white blood cells uh, carry out phagocytosis, okay? This is carried out by phagocytes. And then there's production of antibodies by lymphocytes, also to destroy the bacteria or viruses. So after discussing the components of the lymphatic system, let us go on to discuss the circulation of limb in the body. Right, D, circulation of limb in the body. The lymphatic system does not have its own pump to circulate the limb in the lymphatic vessels. Okay, Unlike the blood circulatory system that has a pump called the heart to pump the blood under high pressure to all parts of the body. Okay, you can see the lymphatic system, it has the lymphatic organs, but it doesn't have any pump to pump the limb in the lymphatic, to move in the lymphatic vessels. So how is the flow of limb carried out? Now the flow of limb is aided by heartbeats and pulses, the pulse huh, in certain parts of the body. So the pulse is a wave of blood that flows through the artery, right? Flows through the arteries. Now, so when there's when the heart beats and when there's a pulse and the pulse throbbing, when the pulse is throbbing, there is movement inside the body tissues, and this will apply external pressure on the lymph vessels or lymphatic vessels, causing the limb to move. 
all right, the lymphatic vessels will be squeezed and then the limb will move in them. Likewise, contraction of surrounding skeletal muscles cause, uh, will press and squeeze uh, the lymphatic vessels. Okay, will cause the muscles to press and squeeze the lymphatic vessels, as seen here. Now, this is quite similar to the movement of blood in the veins, right? Where the pressure is quite low, the blood pressure is quite low. So, the veins rely on the contraction of skeletal muscles to help squeeze the veins and push the blood forward. Same for uh, the limb. Okay, now when skeletal muscles contract, they become broader, shorter and broader, and they will press on the lymphatic vessels and squeeze the lymphatic vessels. So there is movement of the uh, limb forward towards the blood circulatory system at the shoulder part here at the shoulders and also towards the heart, okay? So if the limb try to flow the other way, the valves will close, okay? This is quite like what happens in the veins. All right, so other than that, the flow of limbs is aided by peristalsis in the digestive tract when there is movement, huh? and uh, changes in pressure during inhalation and exhalation of breath. So. The valves, now in lymphatic vessels, one-way valves help to ensure that the lymph flows in one direction continuously back to the heart, back to the blood circulatory system and the heart. And valves prevent the lymph from flowing backwards because they will shut if the lymph flows backwards. Now let's discuss the relationship between blood circulatory system and the lymphatic system. Right, E, relationship between the blood circulatory system and the lymphatic system. So all lymphatic vessels eventually join with one of two main lymphatic vessels. These are the two main bigger lymphatic vessels, which are the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct. Now, talk about the right lymphatic duct first of all. It's found here, okay, on the right shoulder. And the right lymphatic duct receives limb from the right hand side. Okay, so all these are the lymphatic vessels that join together to form the and finally become the right lymphatic duct. Okay, so the right lymphatic duct receives limb from the right hand side of the body, the chest, and the right side of the head and the neck. You'll see that afterwards in the next slide. Now, this duct transports the limb. Eh? into the right subclavian vein. So it's a short part here, the short part here, the right lymphatic duct. So it'll empty its contents, which is the limb, into the right subclavian vein, which is part of the blood circulatory system. All right, as seen here. Now, next, the other duct, the other lymphatic vessel, which is very big, is the thoracic duct. It receives limb from the left, left side of the head, neck and chest, or on the left side, and all body parts below the ribs, okay, the lower part of the body, whether right or left side, will um, the limb from these lower parts will all flow into the thoracic duct. And this thoracic duct actually uh, is found here below in the thora thorax, thoracic region, and then it goes upwards here, and then it brings the limb and empty is contents the limb into the left subclavian vein which is on your left shoulder right so again here is where the lymphatic system is joined to the blood circulatory system okay uh, so there are two main ducts that channel or empty the limb into the blood circulatory system at the right subclavian vein and the left subclavian vein So finally, the limb collected from the whole body will flow back into the blood circulatory system. Right. So here we see the location of the right lymphatic duct and right subclavian vein on the right side of the body and the location of the thoracic duct and the left subclavian vein on the left shoulder, the left part of the body. Right. And here below is the thoracic duct that passes through the thoracic region of the uh, body. So in this picture here, we see the body parts drained by the right lymphatic duct. 
So the limb from all these uh, parts of the body, the blue parts, okay, parts in blue, all the limb from these parts will flow into the right lymphatic duct and into the right subclavian vein. Whereas for the thoracic duct, right, it receives limb from more parts of the body, from the lower part of the body here, and then from the left side of the body, okay, for the upper part. So all the limb from these parts will flow into the thoracic duct and finally from thoracic duct into the left subclavian vein. Here you see a diagram which shows you the relationship or the connection between the blood circulatory system, which is a closed system, all right? It doesn't have any blood capillaries with open ends or, or closed ends because the blood capillaries are all connected to the arterioles and the venules. Huh? And here you have the other circulatory system called the lymphatic system. You can see here the lymphatic capillaries that join together to form the lymphatic vessels. And then there are valves in the lymphatic vessels and you have also limb nodes which filter the limb and gets rid of the bacteria and viruses. And then finally, the lymphatic vessels all join together to form the, either the thoracic duct or the right lymphatic duct. Okay, so the limb is finally uh, brought back to the blood circulatory system in the veins, the right and left subclavian vein. Now this diagram shows you clearly the connections between the blood circulatory system in pink and the lymphatic system, which is in orange. Okay, especially this part. Arteries branch out to form arterioles. Arterioles branch out to form tiny blood capillaries. And then in the region of the tissues, the blood in the blood capillaries will undergo the process of filtration and also uh, diffusion where substances diffuse out of the blood into the tissue fluid. Okay. So the tissue fluid is formed from the plasma of the blood and it will fill the intercellular spaces. 85% of tissue fluid flows back to the blood capillaries. And then the blood capillaries will bring this fluid to the veins and then to the heart. Okay. And after that, it will go to the excretory organs also uh, for the waste products to be excreted. On the other hand, 15% of the tissue fluid flows into the lymphatic capillaries and it is then called the limb. So lymphatic capillaries join to form larger lymphatic vessels and then the limb will pass through the limb nodes and lymphatic organs so. And finally, the lymphatic vessels, there are two, lymphatic main, two main lymphatic vessels which are the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct. So right lymphatic duct will empty its contents, meaning the limb into the right subclavian vein and thoracic duct will empty its contents which is the limb into the left subclavian vein, and this is how limb flows back into the blood circulatory system. Right, now we are going to study the last part, which is the necessity or importance or function of the lymphatic system. So it has three main functions. Lymphatic system complements the blood circulatory system, transports lipid-soluble substances, and is used in body defense. So the last aspect of the lymphatic system that we are going to discuss is the necessity or importance or functions or roles of the lymphatic system. Now, there are three main functions or roles. Firstly, the lymphatic system complements the blood circulatory system. So, it does that by returning the excess tissue fluid that is found in the intercellular spaces back to the bloodstream. Okay? So, the lymphatic capillaries will... Uh, collect or allow the tissue fluid to flow into them and then the tissue fluid will then become the limb and the limb will flow through the lymphatic vessels and through the lymphatic no limb nodes through the limb nodes and finally they will flow back to the blood circulatory system at the right and left subclavian veins right so in this way the tissue fluid excess tissue fluid will return back to the blood circulatory system Thus, the composition, pressure, and volume of blood is maintained in the normal range. Okay? Now, body defense is the second function of the lymphatic system, a very important function. So this is uh, carried out, this function is carried out by the limb nodes, which are the masses of tissue found in the lymphatic system. 
Now, lymph nodes filter out bacteria and other foreign particles from the limb in two ways. Firstly, the lymph nodes produce and store the white blood cells called lymphocytes, which produce antibodies to destroy, destroy the pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses. Also, the antibodies, some antibodies are used to neutralize any toxins or poisons in the limb. Secondly, there are the phagocytes, which can move right to engulf and also digest bacteria through phagocytosis. So in that way, they also help to destroy the pathogens. Now, the third function or role of the lymphatic system is that it helps in the transportation of fat-soluble substances. So during absorption of digested food, in the ileum, fats and fat-soluble substances such as vitamins A, D, E and K diffuse into the lacteals in the villi of the ileum, which is the, a part of the small intestine. And these lacteals are lymphatic capillaries. So let's recall back the structure of a villus in the small intestine. All right. So in the center part of the villus here, we have a lacteal, which is actually a lymphatic capillary. As you can see, it has a closed end at the top. So the lipid-soluble substances like fatty acids and glycerol and vitamins A, D, E, K, all will be absorbed into the lacteals, not into the blood capillaries, but into the lacteals, which are the lymphatic capillaries. And after that, the pathway is that the lipid or fat droplets will be transported by these lymphatic capillaries to the lymphatic vessels, and then it will flow to the thoracic duct, which is still part of the lymphatic system. And finally, it will enter the left subclavian vein, which is part of the blood circulatory system. Okay, so in that way, the fat soluble substances are transported from the villi in the small intestine to the blood circulatory system. Now let's try this formative exercise 10.7 related to the formative exercise in the textbook. What are the two main lymphatic vessels which channel lymph into the blood circulatory system? Now you can pause a while and try to write your answer and then after that uh, click the, the uh, screen or click on the video to see the answer, right? Okay, so what's the answer? Thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct, all right? Now, number two, state three important roles of the lymphatic system. Three marks. So you have to summarize the role of the lymphatic system or the function or importance or necessity of the lymphatic system. Okay, let's wait the answer. Firstly, the lymphatic system collects and returns the excess tissue fluid in the intercellular spaces back to the bloodstream. One mark. Secondly, the lymphatic system transports lipid or fats from the villi in the small intestine to the blood circulatory system. Okay, And thirdly, the lymphatic system plays an important role in body defense because it has lymph nodes which produce lymphocytes that can produce antibodies to destroy pathogens. Right. Question 3. State four differences between the composition of blood, tissue fluid and lymph. Four marks. Okay. So the first difference is that blood contains blood plasma with plasma proteins in them, but tissue fluid and limb contains components of blood plasma without the plasma proteins. Now, secondly, blood contains erythrocytes and platelets, but tissue fluid and limb does not contain erythrocytes and platelets. Thirdly, limb contains more lipid droplets than blood or tissue fluid because uh, the lacteals uh, will absorb the lipids of fatty acids and glycerol from the small intestine or the ileum. Okay, so lacteals are the lymphatic capillaries inside the villus. Okay, lymphatic capillary in the villus. Now, lymph contains a larger number of lymphocytes produced and stored in lymph nodes compared to blood and tissue free. Okay, right, next question after eating fried food, the number of lipid molecules in the limb increases by about 1%. Explain why. Why is it that the lipids in the fried food, how did they get into the limb, right? So uh, what's the answer? So fried food contains the fats that are digested to form fatty acids and glycerol. 
that then diffuse into the lactils in the villi of the small intestines during absorption of food or of nutrients. Then after that, the fatty acids and glycerol will combine to form these lipid droplets, uh, these lipid molecules in the limb, okay, in the lactils, because the lactils are actually lymphatic capillaries. So the lactils are lymphatic capillaries which then transport the lipids in the limb to the lymphatic vessels and to other parts of the lymphatic system and finally back into the blood. Thus, the number of lipid molecules in the limb increases by 1% because the fatty acids and glycerol are absorbed by the lactils, which is a type of lymphatic capillary. Okay, okay that's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. I hope you have benefited from it. Please share, like and subscribe. And goodbye for now till we meet again. All the best to you all.